Nature versus nurture is the age-old debate, especially when considering the heinous crimes of adults. But what about if the perpetrators are children? Accidents aside, just how twisted does a young mind have to be to maim and murder before they can legally drive a car? Today, I'm looking into the disturbing world of juvenile crime. I'm Mike with List25, and from a shockingly young serial killer to murdering siblings, here are 25 kids who went to prison for insane reasons. 25. Amarajit Sada Amarajit Sada became the world's youngest serial killer at the tender young age of 7. His victims, all babies under a year old, even included his own flesh and blood, his sister and cousin. Despite rumors of his involvement in the deaths in the village, locals turned a blind eye, dismissing it as a family issue. It was only after Sada murdered his six-month-old neighbor Kushbu that the authorities finally became involved. He calmly confessed to the murders, often with a smile on his face, which led to several debates about his sanity. He was ultimately diagnosed with a chemical imbalance and spent his childhood in a children's home. Upon turning 18 in 2016, he was given a new identity. Today, his whereabouts are unknown. 24. Daniel Bartlam In 2011, Daniel Bartlam, then 14, went from watching a popular soap opera to becoming a real-life monster. Inspired by a twisted plot from Coronation Street, he brutally murdered his own mother with a hammer. The twisted teen then tried to cover up his horrific crime by setting their house on fire. During the investigation, detectives found his narrative had too many inconsistencies and found a deleted story he wrote on his computer that actually mirrored the real murder. Bartlam was sentenced to life in prison. 23. Evan Miller in July 2003, 14-year-old Evan Miller and 16-year-old Colby Smith brutally murdered Cole Cannon, beating him to death with a baseball bat before setting his trailer ablaze with him inside. Both were initially given life sentences, Smith with the chance of parole after 10 years since he testified against Miller, and Miller without the possibility of parole. Miller's sentence faced renewed scrutiny in 2021 during a wave of legal challenges questioning the fairness of life sentences for juvenile offenders. The judge emphasized Miller's calculated actions and deemed him the principal aggressor, despite his young age, and resentenced him to life without parole. 22. Thomas McLeod Jr. In 2008, in Pontiac, Michigan, several homeless men were assaulted and two were beaten to death. Three teens, including Thomas McLeod Jr., were arrested. McLeod later admitted that he was there but swore that he had no intent to kill, claiming his confession was coerced since he was high, drunk, and confused. He was, however, tried as an adult and sentenced to life without parole. 21. Anton Wood in 1892, 10-year-old Anton Wood landed in an adult prison for the cold-blooded murder of a wealthy businessman. Sentenced to hard time, Anton's life took a surprising turn when he actually turned into a model prisoner, thwarting escape attempts and even earning a recommendation for clemency. After his release, he struggled to adapt to his new life, changing his name and facing the stigma of his past. But he persevered, securing a job as a traveling salesman, marrying a judge's daughter, and eventually receiving a full pardon. 20. Paul Henry Gingrich In 2010, 12-year-old Paul Gingrich, along with his 15-year-old friend Colt Lundy, murdered his friend's stepfather Phil Danner. Paul was sentenced as an adult. While the brutal nature of Danner's murder was widely condemned, the severity of the sentences, particularly in light of the defendant's youth, generated controversy within the U.S. and internationally, even more so since Paul became the youngest person in Indiana history to be sentenced as an adult. His sentence was later revised, focusing on rehabilitation instead of punishment. After nearly seven years in juvenile detention, Gingrich was released in 2017 at the age of 19. 19. Christian Fernandez At 12 years old, Christian Fernandez was no stranger to violence and neglect. His childhood was marred by abuse, from beatings by his stepfather to sexual assault by a cousin, not to mention that his mother was only 14 when she had him. Tragically, his trauma would lead to the sexual abuse of his five-year-old half-brother and the death of his two-and-a-half-year-old brother, whom he beat to death. Initially facing life in prison, a Supreme Court ruling on juvenile sentencing changed everything. Released in 2018 just after his 19th birthday, Fernandez's case became a lightning rod for debate, shining a spotlight on the complex relationship between childhood trauma and crime. 18. Brenda Spencer in 1979, the world was shocked when 16-year-old Brenda Spencer opened fire on students arriving at Cleveland Elementary School in San Diego, foreshadowing the tragic school shootings that would become all too familiar in the years to come. 
Armed with a rifle gifted by her father, she killed the principal and a custodian, in the process also injuring eight children and a police officer. Her reason? I don't like Mondays. Spencer was sentenced to 25 years to life. Still incarcerated today, she's been denied parole multiple times. Her next chance for release is in 2025. 17. Eric Smith In 1993, a bullied 13-year-old boy Eric Smith was accused of a horrific crime, the murder of 4-year-old Derek Roby. Little Derek had been beaten, strangled, smashed with rocks, and sexually assaulted. It was a tragedy that left everyone asking, how could this happen? Eric Smith never could explain why he did it. As for Derek's heartbroken parents, there was never any closure. Initially diagnosed with intermittent explosive disorder, a fancy way of saying he couldn't control his rage, Smith was later labeled with ADHD. Despite his age, he was tried as an adult, found guilty of second-degree murder, and sentenced to nine years to life in prison. After 27 years behind bars, he was granted parole in 2021 and released the following year. 16. Antonio Barbeau. In 2012, the quiet town of Sheboygan Falls, Wisconsin was rocked by a horrifying crime. A 14-year-old boy, Antonio Barbeau, murdered his 78-year-old grandmother, Barbara Olson, with a hatchet. It was a brutal attack and ended with over 18 blows to Olson's head. The boys later said that it was initially meant to be nothing more than a robbery, but something snapped and the teens went from petty thieves to cold-blooded killers. Barbeau was sentenced to life in prison. He'll get his first shot at parole after he turns 50. 15. Jesse Pomeroy 14-year-old Jesse Pomeroy became the youngest person to be convicted of murder in Massachusetts in 1871, earning him the twisted nickname, The Boy Torturer. Jesse's wasn't a case of teenage rebellion gone wrong. His cruelty had deep roots. By age 10, it was already known that he enjoyed torturing and killing animals. Pomeroy attacked young boys with knives and tried to drown them, causing severe injuries. He even nearly decapitated one child. When finally caught, he simply said, put me somewhere so I can't do such things. Initially sentenced to death by hanging, Pomeroy's punishment was eventually commuted to life in solitary confinement. He spent the next 58 years behind bars and died at the age of 72. 14. Joshua Phillips In 1998, 8-year-old Maddie Clifton vanished from her Jacksonville, Florida neighborhood. Little did anyone know, the answer to her disappearance was hidden just across the street, under the waterbed of her 14-year-old neighbor, Josh Phillips. The community searched for Maddie for six agonizing days, with Josh even joining in. Maddie's body was eventually discovered by Josh's mother when she noticed a suspicious leak coming from his room. Josh claimed it was an accident, a panicked reaction to her screams after he hit her with a baseball. But the evidence told a different story. Maddie had been beaten, stabbed, and left to die under the bed. Despite his young age, Josh was tried as an adult and found guilty of murder. He was sentenced to life in prison without parole. 13. Sharon Carr In 1992, Katie Ratcliffe was stabbed to death on her way home from a nightclub in Surrey. Her family and the community were left desperate for information after the case went cold. Almost two years later, the shocking truth came out. Katie's killer was 12-year-old Sharon Carr. Carr had randomly targeted Katie and stabbed her over 30 times. She remained undetected until her disturbing behavior escalated, which led to her arrest for another violent incident. In custody, Carr couldn't stop bragging about the murder, and her obsession with violence was revealed. Carr was sentenced to life in prison. 12. Natsumi Tsuji In 2004, Japan was shaken by the brutal murder of 12-year-old Satomi Mitarai at the hands of her classmate Natsumi Tsuji, or as the world came to know her, Navadatan. In her confession, Suji admitted she killed Satomi because of a fight they had online where Satomi made comments about her looks and personality. The shocking crime ignited a nationwide conversation about the dark side of the internet and its potential to influence young minds. Suji was reintegrated into society in 2013 under a new identity. 11. Nehemiah Grigo in 2013, 15-year-old Nehemiah Grigo shot and killed five members of his family in South Valley, New Mexico. His victims included his mother, father, and even his three younger siblings. After the incident, Grigo claimed he experienced a psychotic episode, but he was nonetheless tried as an adult and ultimately pled guilty to the murders. He was sentenced to three concurrent life sentences with the possibility of parole after 30 years. 10. Conrad Schaefer the disturbing 2013 trend didn't stop with Nehemiah Grigo. In Florida, 15-year-old Conrad Schaefer went on a shooting rampage and claimed the lives of two young men. According to the police reports, he killed Eric Rupnerin and David Guerrero 
for fun. Schaefer, like Grigo, was tried as an adult. His defense argued that his young age and troubled past should be considered mitigating factors. However, the court ultimately handed down a life sentence, emphasizing the severity of his crimes and the need to protect society. 9. Paula Cooper In 1986, Paula Cooper became the youngest person to receive the death sentence in the state of Indiana. She was 15 years old. Just one year earlier, Cooper brutally murdered 78-year-old Ruth Pelkey in Gary, Indiana. Pelkey was stabbed over 30 times with a butcher knife. Cooper and three other miners then stole a measly $10 and drove away with Pelkey's car. Cooper's age and the severity of her punishment led to a national debate over juvenile justice and the death penalty. Her sentence was eventually commuted to 60 years in prison after a plea for clemency from Pope John Paul. Cooper was released in 2013 after serving 28 years in prison and died by suicide in 2015. 8. Jasmine Richardson Have you ever seen the movie Natural Born Killers? Jasmine Richardson fell in love with 23-year-old Jeremy Steinke when she was only 12 years old. By 2006, Richardson and Steinke, fueled by their contempt for her disapproving parents, decided they had to go. They killed Richardson's parents together before Richardson herself murdered her 8-year-old brother, Jacob. Their confessions were shocking. Steinke admitted that he watched the Oliver Stone movie with his friends before the murders, even confirming that Richardson taunted her father as he lay dying. Richardson's age limited her sentence to 10 years, while Steinke received three life sentences. After serving her time and attending university, Richardson was released in 2016. 7. Nathaniel Brazil During the last day of the 2000 school year, Nathaniel Brazil, 13, shot and killed his English teacher, Barry Grinnell. Brazil had a history of behavioral problems and was sent home earlier that day for throwing a water balloon. Right before the shooting, Grinnell also refused to allow Brazil to speak to two girls in his class. Fueled by a potent cocktail of teenage angst and easy access to a gun, Brazil shot his teacher. During his trial, Brazil swore that he never intended to kill Grinnell and that the gun went off by accident. He did not sway the jury. Brazil was tried as an adult and sentenced to 28 years in prison for second-degree murder. 6. Michael Carnial In December 1997, 14-year-old Michael Carnial took a gun to school and opened fire at a school prayer meeting. Three students died and several others were wounded. Carnial had always been a bit different. As such, he was constantly bullied by his peers. Plagued by anxiety, depression, and paranoid schizophrenia, the constant bullying only made things worse. Despite his age, Carnial was tried as an adult and sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 25 years. In September 2022, however, he was denied parole in order to serve out his life sentence. 5. Jamarion Lahorn in 2014, nine-year-old Connor Verkirke was stabbed and killed by 12-year-old Jamarion Lahorn while playing at the neighborhood playground. The kids had been playing together peacefully for almost an hour before the incident. Connor's family was devastated. During the court case, a history of abuse and neglect in Jamarion's life came to the fore. The revelation would end up with his parents being charged with child abuse and a very complex legal battle that ultimately ended with Jamarion's conviction and sentencing as an adult. After serving six and a half years in custody, Jamarion was released in 2021, determined to make amends. Today, he dedicates his life to helping at-risk youth in the hopes of preventing similar tragedies. 4. Alex and Derek King In 2001, 12-year-old Alex and 13-year-old Derek King beat their father to death before setting their house ablaze in an attempt to conceal the crime. While no specific motive for the crime could ever be confirmed, the boys' relationship with their father was strained, and they lived in extreme poverty. Bizarrely, the boys found solace and a father figure in 41-year-old Ricky Chavez, who happened to be a convicted child molester and friend of the family. Investigators were sure that the boys were aided or instructed by Chavez, but prosecutors insisted on separate trials. During his trial, Chavez was acquitted, while Alex and Derek were convicted of second-degree murder in theirs. Public outcry and a sympathetic judge would later lead to reduced charges, and the boys were ultimately released after serving only six and seven years, respectively. 3. James Arsene In 1885, James Arsene, a 23-year-old Cherokee man, was executed by the U.S. government for a crime he allegedly committed 13 years earlier, at the tender age of 10. Arrested and tried as a child, Arsene somehow managed to escape and eluded authorities for more than a decade before they caught up to him. Although he maintained his innocence and was a child when the crime occurred, his pleas were ignored and James was executed by hanging. 2. Nathaniel Abraham 
Nathaniel Abraham made headlines in 1997, at just 11 years old, when he was charged and convicted of second-degree murder in the fatal shooting of 18-year-old Ronnie Green Jr. in Pontiac, Michigan. He was one of the youngest people in the U.S. to be tried as an adult, and his subsequent sentencing led to nationwide debates on whether such young offenders fully grasped the consequences of their actions. Following his conviction, Nathaniel Abraham was sentenced to juvenile detention until the age of 21. After his release in 2017, he found it impossible to stay out of trouble. He became a habitual offender and was convicted of a drug possession charge that led to further imprisonment. 1. Kristen Avery Pittman Do you think an antidepressant can lead to murder? In 2001, 12-year-old Christopher Pittman shocked the nation after he murdered his grandparents in South Carolina. But the murders only laid the foundation for what was to come. His defense decided to focus their strategy around the antidepressant Zoloft, in the process setting the stage for a highly controversial trial. According to his legal team, Pittman's troubled past and struggles with behavioral issues intensified following a medication change that brought severe side effects. The defense's strategy, however, fell short, and Pittman was convicted of murder and handed a sentence of 30 to life. During his incarceration, Pittman would come to reveal that he was a transgender woman and legally changed his name to Kristen Avery Pittman. After serving 22 years, Kristen was released in 2023. And that's it for today. Thank you for joining me on this slightly dark but hopefully fascinating journey. If you're up for more mind-blowing facts, be sure to check out our video on 25 insane facts that'll shake your reality, where I discussed how most mammals only get around 1 billion heartbeats in a lifetime, I know, right? And looked at one very surprising thing nobody tells you about the Korean War. To go to that video now, simply click on the link right here.